Hey guys, today we're going to be talking about what a lot of you guys have been waiting for, and that's the electric wiring of this layout. Now, be patient with me because I'm going to have to divide this into segments of videos on how to wire a layout because it's very complex. Uh, but today we're going to get an introduction of wiring, and just keep in mind that my layout is not the same as your layout. So a lot of the wiring is going to have to be improvised if you have a different uh, layout than I have, or you're going to have to get in the books and do the research yourself. Model Railroader has a book for uh, DCC wiring, and there's a lot of online resources for DCC wiring, so a lot of it is interpretive to what you've got going on on your layout. I've got my layout with a double oval. You know, if you've got something like that, you can probably be able to figure it out. I've also got modules, so I've made some uh, different steps that I've taken that some people may not take, uh, but we'll go over that. But just like with a track, uh, when you're laying out the track, you need a track plan, you kind of need a wiring schematic or diagram so you know what you're doing. Now for me, I'm red, green, colorblind, so being under the table under dark light, I can't really see the difference between red and green colors. So I'm using black and yellow for my uh, wires. Now you need to pick a wire and keep it with a side of rail. For example, uh, I'm going to have yellow rail or yellow wire on the outside rail of each one of these and black wire on the inside of rail. Never switch them or you're going to have problems. So that's the first thing that you got to keep aware of when you're doing wiring. <clears throat> now I was talking about the diagrams. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here. Uh, now this is an example uh, where they've used blue and orange. I've got uh, yellow and black so just make sure one color goes to these uh, jumpers here, or to these uh, block terminals, or barrier strips, I'm sorry. So all these screw uh, boxes here with screws in them, those are called barrier strips, and we're going to go over that. Uh, but this is basically what it's going to look like under on the underside of my table here on this wiring diagram. Uh, if you need to pause the video to look at it closer, feel free to do so, but you've got pink for the... Uh, barrier strip jumpers and you've got uh, outer rail in this case is orange, inner rail is blue. I'm just going to modify it to mine which is uh, yellow and black like I said. <clears throat> so now that we've shown you that, let's go over some things that you're going to need. Now I'm using these because I'm not much of a soldering guy. I hate soldering. Um, so what I'm going to be able to do with these is just simply run the wire under these screws <clears throat> under these metal tabs here and uh, screw it down and that will create a connection in between the screw and the metal tab. So as you can see this here fits perfectly in with my diagram with these eight post uh, strips here. Now you can pick these up at Radio Shack. They're called eight position dual row barrier strips and in my case I need six of them. So I've got six ready to go ordered off RadioShack.com and then on the diagram you see these smaller uh, barrier strips. They are called two position dual row barrier strips and you can see them here. And they are located on there on the diagram and I need 12 of those. So actually 13 because I've got a, to make the connection to my controller. So I've got these. Uh, old model writing trick I've told you guys before about is telephone wire. You can uh, order on RadioShack.com indoor outdoor telephone wire 24 gauge. You open it up and gut it out and you've got the wires in there. You've got the red and green which I can't hardly tell and then you've got the black and yellow which is what I've decided to use. So you've got those wires. Uh, this is a cheap way to get a good amount of wire. You're just going to have to cut off the amounts you need and gut this out to get to the wires you need but they're pretty durable wires you have in here and you won't need to be doing anything to them. Here are the barrier strips I was talking, or the uh, jumpers I was talking about. We're going to have to cut these in half because they, cannot be t they can't be touching each other on the same uh, barrier strip when we have our electric wiring going on because there's a positive and a negative side and they can't be connected or we're going to get a short or the signal, DCC signal is just not going to travel. You obviously need a good pair of wire strippers. I don't know what brand this is, uh, but these are my favorite. I have this other set that's really crappy. So I'm going to need a set of wire strippers uh, to strip the wire 
down to get to the metal as it's insulated into a little casing. You've got to get to the bare metal so you can connect it to your bur your uh, burger strips. And then in my case, another thing, uh, like I said, it may be exclusive just to me, is you need crimp on spade tongues or uh, spade connectors. Now this is, I'm going to connect basically this connector to the wire itself after this insulation is off. Only module to module. So when I go to move, I can easily disconnect these and I don't have wires hanging out everywhere. And when I, you know, get to my new location, I can put them back together. That makes for a good, solid, uh, movable layout for me to uh, work with every time I move. It's not crazy disconnections everywhere, wires flying around everywhere. And another thing, try to keep your wires organized. Try to keep them grouped together with zip ties if you can. Uh, there's going to be this bus line, once again on the diagram, that the line, the bus line runs the connections from one barrier strip to another and that goes all the way around and you have to keep it uh, on its appropriate side. So if it's outer rail you got to keep it on one side and inner rail you got to keep it on the other side. So and then those spade connectors on this other diagram here you can see are going to be uh, on connections that I need to easily disconnect when I need to move. So basically in between modules is where those spade connectors are going to be in my case. So keep all that in mind when you're doing your uh, electric wiring. I'll be starting this wiring process uh, step by step. The simplest way for me to I figure to do it is I'm going to go ahead and get some double sided tape or maybe mount these things since they have screw holes on the underside of my layout. Just the way this diagram looks, I'm going to mount these strips exactly where they need to be. And this one is actually going to have to be on one table or the other. It can't be in the center but uh, this one barrier strip here. But I'm going to mount those up and then I'm going to work on the wiring. So this next video I will have all of these barrier strips mounted in place and we will start wiring one to one uh, to make sure that this is done correctly. So thanks for watching. Keep watching as we go through this and please be patient with me because I'm trying to get this done quickly so I haven't really gotten into video editing software uh, I've got some on order, but I don't have time to cut scene and stuff like that. So I'm going to have to do a video of uh, break it down one by one. So you're seeing it step by step per video. So there's going to be probably three, four, maybe five videos just on wiring. Thanks for watching. See you next time.